This is an art attack? This is an art attack? This is... Digital. YouTube viewers and random Robot Wars fans, with Robo Nerd taking place this week and my interview with Team Deator being a part of it, I couldn't help but want to make a video showing you all how to make your very own Deator model to play with at home. So let's take a look at the items you require to build your own little mini replica of the fur brained machine from Ireland. In order to build Deator you will need the following, some card, I've gone for a Cheerios box because I'm tight, some corrugated cardboard, again went with a pizza box because I'm tight, some black duct tape, some scissors as well, a red magic marker, a black magic marker, oh, there it goes, uh, I think that was a pen as well, that, that's gone too, uh, a ruler, some sellotape, that's nice isn't it, some super duper glue, I think that was a compass that just fell there as well, some lollipop sticks, and some kitchen roll or some Aldi toilet paper will do fine as well. And most importantly of all, you will need the official Deator How to Build instructions, which you can find on my Facebook page free of charge because I'm nice like that. Right, let's get going. So first of all, you'll want to open your cereal box up, cut along the seam at the side to flatten it out. If you've got some craft card, you won't need to do this. But either way, once it's prepared, get all of your instructions copied onto it. And of course, they do come with measurements. That's nice, isn't it? And also, whenever you're drawing out the instructions onto the card, it's a good idea to add all the detail while it's still in this phase. So here you can see all the pieces are drawn out and coloured in and detail added and what have you. And you can also see that's rather shiny and reflective. That's because I've added a layer of sellotape across the top. That's going to protect it from any damage that it may sustain. While on the back you can see I've added a layer of black duct tape. And this is just to make the card nice and strong and rigid. So you can have a good proper ding dong of a battle with Deator. So here you can see all of the pieces are cut out nicely and neatly. They've got that sellotape layer on the front and that nice rigid duct tape layer on the back. So with all our pieces now finally cut out and ready, let's get building. Oh yeah, and also you'll need a little Q-tip or whatever the hell it is you call these things for the build as well. Sorry about that, I'm kind of building this on the fly here. So first of all, you'll want to take your two lollipop sticks and cut them as instructed in the... Well, in the instructions, next up, put them together and glue them using the super duper glue. Then once it's dried, you're going to want to paint this black. I've just used some magic black marker because I'm just like that. And also drill a hole through it. That's where the Q-tip's going to go. So you're going to want to snip the ends off. There goes one. And there goes the other. And this is going to slot into the little hole that you've drilled through the middle of the lollipop sticks. See? What'd I tell you? Wasn't lying, was I? Now this has become the basis for Deator's little bucket scoop flipper weapon. But we'll set that aside for now as we need to actually build the bucket itself. So here's the panel for it and I've got a very sneaky little tactic for bending it into the right shape using this marker. As you can see here, what I do is I fold this panel up and around over the actual body of the marker just twisting it around, making it completely cylindrical. Just give it a nice little roll there. There we go. Okay, that's probably enough now. Come on, you're not baking bread. Yeah, so there we go. You can see it's now bent and around and into the proper shape. This can now be glued onto the front curve of the lollipop sticks that we prepared earlier. And we'll just let that dry for now. And that is pretty much Deator's weapon assembled. Now, as we let that dry, as you can see here, I've cut out six of the little curved side panels. These two will obviously go on the outer shell of the robot, so we can set those aside. These two will go on the inner side, and as you can see, I've added two little holes at the top. This is where Deator's weapon will attach, but obviously, more on that later. And these two, meanwhile, are a little bit different, because if I flip them over, you can see on the back, I've glued an extra set as well, so eight of these in total but we'll set those aside for now. Alrighty, so starting off with our base panel, we're gonna add these two red curved side panels to the outer edges, where luckily they match up. And of course, how are we gonna attach them? Our good old friend, Sellotape. So here they are, nicely and firmly attached to each side of the base plate, but now we're gonna focus on the two curved top panels. 
So it's back to using the same technique we used to build the bucket, where we're going to take these panels and wrap them around a marker pen, all the way around, just folding them up, twisting them around the actual body of the marker, until they're all curled up again, making a cylinder out of them, and keeping it as tight as possible so whenever we let go and they spring open again, you can see they've perfectly curved into a rounded shape, so we can attach these to the base of Deator. So as you can see already, Deator is starting to take shape with those rounded kind of wheel guard sections, I guess, but as you can see in the middle, it is very hollow and therefore susceptible to being folded or crushed in. That's where our good friend Mr. Kitchen Roll is going to come into play here. We're going to take some Kitchen Roll, ball it up and stuff it inside these sections. That's going to give them a little bit more stability in the long run. Jumping ahead, you can see I've now added both side panels and of course I've got some Kitchen Roll stuffed in there. But now it's time to add those corrugated inner supports, the ones with the holes at the top, and they just slot in and are taped into place, just completing that main body section of Deator. Here we have both inner sections fully attached, so now it's time to add those two front triangular sections which are taped at the front and then bent back until they fit flush against those wheel sections and you can then tape those into place. Now the model's really starting to look familiar, isn't it? But you can also tell I've added the side panels and also the back panel on here. They're just taped along the edges of that black strut that you can see sticking out the back. And once that's complete, you can go ahead and add the upper back panel. <laughs> We're in the end game now. So Dator's weapon's now been attached and you do this just by taking the little Q-tip section and sliding it in through those holes and those inner supports. And as you can see, whenever you press on the back of Dator's arm, the little bucket will raise. It's almost like actual thoughts been put into this, isn't it? Now we're going to take a look at those corrugated panels which have been glued together on both sides. And these are going to create those little rounded sections at the back of Dator. So you basically measure it by putting Dator on the side and using a pencil to draw the outline. And here's one that I made earlier. <laughs> it's like I've got a job on Blue Peter. Where you can see it'll slot into place and you can just tape those onto the model. At this point you can go ahead and start adding the miscellaneous bits of detail like the big thick black angry eyebrows. I've made these using some corrugated cardboard painted black. You can also see the little spikes added around the edges of Deator. These were done just by cutting little slits into the side of the model and then drawing out and cutting out some little spikes and just sticking them into those slots around the sides. And at long last we're going to complete the look <laughs> Look, get it by adding the eyes. I have another sneaky tactic for doing this. We're going to take some duct tape and wrap it around itself so it's sticky on all sides. We're then going to stick this onto the back of the eye and then we're going to use that to attach to the main body of Deator. And this basically allows kids during play to pop the eyes off, which was a common feature for Deator whenever it was in battle. And I just thought it would be nice to incorporate that into this little model too. And with that, Deator is now complete, and I think it looks pretty good. It certainly turned out a heck of a lot better than the original Deator model I made, all the way back whenever I was a sweet little innocent 11 year old boy watching his Robot Wars on a Friday night. I've always disliked this model of Deator that I built, and I've always dreamed of the day where I could get a chance to have a little bit of a redemption of it. And I really think that the new Deator that I've built in this video looks a heck of a lot better than this did. He would like to hope anyway. As with most of the cardboard models that I make, I'm an absolute nitpicky little dweeb of a nerd, so there are some issues, like for example on the back there, you can see that I kind of mucked up the measurements initially for the flipping arm. That's hopefully been corrected on the revised plans that you should be using. Uh, also the eyes looked a little bit too big, in fact these are the uh, new eyes that I cut out for it. But even then, I think they look a little bit too big as well. But for the most part, I think it looks okay. I've certainly managed to nail the overall body shape of it. Although, having said that, I do think that the back is still a little bit too elongated. I am though really happy with how the flipper turned out. I had this rough design in my head for a couple of weeks and it was really great to finally put it into practice. I don't really get a lot of free time lately so I kind of had to speed run this build but even putting it together super fast, I'm really really happy with how that turned out. Out of all the Deator Nemesis designs, I think this one has to be my favourite. So I was always gutted as a kid whenever they never released a toy of it. Which is why I put this video together so fans at home can get their chance to own a little model of 
of Deator. And in fact, while you're at it, why not try building one that isn't designed with fur on it so you can add your own fur onto it later? Let me know how it goes in the comments. So try it yourself and build your own little cardboard model of Deator. Heck, you can even use my plans to build an outweight of it. I won't mind, just let me know. I'd love to see how it turns out. And let's not forget, there's instructions for other machines from Robot Wars Past and Present available online. Bamoth, Storm 2, Mute, Chronic, Apollo, Carbide, Eruption, they can all be found online. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Happy Robo Nerd, and long live Robot Wars. Mwah! Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. And why not be extra awesome like all of these people and support us on Patreon. Links are in the description. Until next time, farewell.